Hi there. In this episode of our Pathways to Success video series, I'm interviewing Namita Biswas, a Chief Compliance Counsel at Harbour Solutions Group. Namita and I have worked together for quite a few years now, um, both as a candidate and as a client, um, and we want to welcome her to the series today. Welcome, Namita. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Could you um, maybe start off by telling our viewers and, and listeners a bit about you and your background? I started life as a initially a paralegal at uh, a firm that was called Cameron Mark B. Hewitt, now CMS. I did my training contract with Hogan Lovells. Um, I was there for about five years. And then I moved in-house um, as corporate counsel uh, with GE, General Electric Group, in their insurance business. Um, a few years while I was when I was there, we they did an IPO, and I was very fortunate to be one of the lawyers on the inside um, and led with my boss the IPO and did some really good work and got really good experience. Um, and the IPO was morphed into a company called Genworth Financial, and I moved with the IPO. So I was with uh, G in Genworth for about 13 years. Um, I then went into the reinsurance world. I've always done financial services. Um, I spent six years at a company called Reinsurance Group of America. And most recently, I have joined Harbour as its Chief Compliance Counsel. Just remind us, how many years ago was it that you moved into the interim market and, and, and started consulting? After my stint at RGA, I took an a interim role at Pacific Life Reinsurance uh, to cover maternity leave. I really enjoyed that. I got some great experience and I had the flexibility of kind of deciding whether I, I liked the role or not. Um, and whilst I did like the role, it was a maternity cover, so I knew it was going to come to an end. But I had some great experience, and then that got me thinking as to whether I should you know, continue on the path of interim roles or, or look for something permanent. Um, and I took this role at uh, Harbour as the as an in, on an interim basis to help out with the project. Uh, enjoyed working with the, with the company; the people are great. Um, I get great flexibility. Um, I have two small children, and um, Late, late last year they offered me the permanent role so I, I went back into being permanent but I had the benefit of testing the market testing the firm testing the role to make sure it suited me and it I, I suited it so it worked out really well. What were some of the I guess initial and major challenges that you faced when you first sort of went from being that permanent lawyer being there for years part of the furniture to being the, the new person and also the new person who's not there on a permanent basis and I guess the second part to my question there is what were some of those so challenges, but also what were some of those big kind of mindset changes, I guess, that you had to make? It took a while to sort of kind of come to terms with the fact that I wasn't going to be permanent. I wasn't permanent. I was just there and I was expected to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. so, um, when you go into him, you're, you don't have the niceties of sort of being introduced to everyone and, you know, getting sort of settling into the role. Um, with an interim role, my experience has been that you kind of they want you and they want you now so I remember going for my interview and, and this working you start and I needed like a two-week lead in time and that's quite long for an interim role because they kind of want you to start the next day or a couple of days later mm. um, and then the work's just given um fortunately with Pacific Life I had some reinsurance knowledge and uh because of my previous role and, and financial insurance knowledge so I understood the the lingo I understood the kind of urgency of things and I was able to just find my feet actually that's what you had to do with just find your feet you just go and speak to so-and-so and you're thinking well who is so-and-so and where are they where do they sit so you just have to kind of work your way around and and a bit more common knowledge it's not given to you on the plate as as you'd expect in a, per in a permanent position. And do you feel that that was an easier transition for you not just because of the sort of the sector specific knowledge that you had but also because of your level as in, do you feel because you were going in at a sort of, or oh, you were sort of 15 years plus at this point, yeah. that in terms of PQE, do you feel that just in terms of advice for others in the market, um, would you say that that was, was a huge benefit? And actually, that makes more sense, I guess, in terms of transitioning from being a lawyer in a permanent position into a consulting role where you don't, like you say, you don't have the luxury of time to sort of get up to speed? I think so. I think um, it definitely played a part. I, my confidence was that level was up um, you know I knew the mm. I knew what they were talking about I knew you know when we were asked to look at financial statements and I've never seen this company's financial statements and I'm reviewing them and signing them off from a from a legal perspective I kind of need a way to look at what what areas to look out for and that comes with experience and because I have the experience my confidence levels were up so you kind of it's an upward spiral 
so mm-hmm. it just feeds onto each other and, and yeah but I mean if you do interim roles and you're not seeing you it's you just you just have to get that confidence from somehow somewhere and somehow um so I don't think it's a by being more junior it's not going to prohibit you it shouldn't prohibit you from doing the interim roles but certainly just something to bear in mind the next question I was going to ask you was the main challenges I guess joining a new business and joining remotely as a contractor and then the second part is how did you get around that challenge was just not knowing where to go and who to speak to and and because everyone's on teams um you know our, our CEO you know I knew his name but I don't know you don't get to know the personalities and, and not just him just generally you just don't get to know people's personalities and and so your behavior is different when you're on the other side of the screen than it would be in the office um, okay. because you don't get that um, kind of that visibility of who does what and, and how to approach things so I think that for me was the biggest challenge and, and just finding you know I, I the role I took on in the interim was to look I had to look for loads of documents to put business plans and all sorts together and just not knowing where to go and how the people's filing systems work and who to ask and you know and everything's done you just don't pop over to someone's desk you've got to set up a call you've got to set up a team's message with them and, and they never met you and some of them don't even know who I was because there wasn't the formal introduction wasn't there as you would when you walk around the office and get introduced so uh, yeah those were the big challenges and, and just overcoming them is you've just got to be a lot more proactive so I, I made, I've, I've got a list of the people I need to speak to. I set up those calls. Uh, so rather than have a hello by the coffee machine, it was like a let's do coffee over the over teams. Understand sort of how where documents and filing systems are and things that you say so you, you don't have to constantly rely on people to send you them and stuff because you don't want to become annoying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's 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 really is making sure you get the time and, and be prepared that this will be don't get disheartened when it takes a lot longer than it would otherwise leading on from that one of the questions I want to ask you was around how to best influence eternal clients and build relationships with stakeholders is there anything I mean you, you sort of touched on that a little bit but is there anything in particular that helps you sort of really build and develop those relationships and probably even though it does take time as quickly as you could um, and make yourself visible to the business whilst working from you know your home office yeah, I was. Um, I made sure I was around a lot, so um, they were very good. We used to have sort of coffee Tuesdays and available to go on team. So I made sure I did quite a lot of those. Lots of people I worked with was one in particular. I found someone who had knew the business that I was supporting and knew lots of things. So I kind of almost latched onto that person, um, and they were very helpful. And they want you to. You know, most businesses you you've been you've joined because they want to be successful, and that your success is their success. So just find someone that you could almost, in a, in a nice way, latch onto and who can help you, who doesn't mind helping you. Um, and then they can point you in the right direction. And then from, from meeting them, they will, you know, point you in the right direction to another person. Then you can build up a rapport with those, that person, and then keep working around. So very soon people get to know who you are and, and where you can help them, etc. So they then come to find you. And when that happens, you know, you kind of, you've done it. You've, you've been successful and people start looking out for you looking at an interim position it is a different kind of set of considerations and, and mindset I think with with an interim you've got to look six to 12 months um ahead not two to five years so don't go in assuming or one thinking that this could become a permanent role it, it might it may not so the specific life role I knew it was a maternity cover and you know I, I knew it was you know most likely that, that the lady would come back and she did so I just wanted to do a good job in a way, it was a good job to hand it back to her so that um, it's also your reputation. I think for me, it was I don't want her to leave and say, well, the meeting didn't do this, the meeting didn't do that. Um, so I make sure that sort of I had the wheels rolling and it was churning over. So when I handed it back to her, she picked up something that had been good um, and, and that she could kind of take forward. Um, obviously, permanent role is very different. You create that role, you make that role. And I think the, the mindset is this is in an interim basis, it's and if you are doing a maternity or cover or, or looking after someone else's role, it isn't your role, it's theirs. So you've got to approach things thinking, how would they do it if I handed this back to them? How can I hand that back rather than going in and just certainly don't go in and like a bull in a china shop and just change everything because you, A, you won't be very popular with anyone. B, they'll undo everything you've done when you hand the role back. 
Um, so I think that's that's where my mindset change had to, to come in. So I'm used, so used to, I mean, I was general counsel at, uh, I think you can island in RG, at RGA. I was deputy general counsel at, at Genworth. Um, so I had a very different role of, of sort of setting the scene and setting out how I wanted things to be done. When I went into Pacific Life, things had been set for me and I had to just sort of confirm, conform to what they had. Um, and it is a different mindset change and, and you just have to remember that you are there on a, a short term basis. If it le led to something else like this current role has, um, I'm, I'm now putting my marker in and, and I'm, I'm kind of changing things slowly the way I'd like it to be, the way I think is appropriate for our organisation. So, yeah, that, that would be my advice. Just just go in think, knowing that you have to hand this role back to someone. There are loads of benefits of working as a, a contractor, right? And it'd be great to hear what your experience has been. The benefit of the interim arc is you can kind of plug in and plug out. So, you know, if you want to have the summer holidays free, you try and find a role where it will end just before the summer holidays. And then you look again in September when the schools are back open. Or if you don't have children and you just want to do something else for a change, you know. Um, I think lockdown has really made people realise that there is more to life than just work. You know, and you're trying to get that work-life balance. Um, and an interim role can help someone achieve that. I certainly think the, the interim market is is excellent way of um, pushing up your skills, drumming up those skills that might be slightly lacking in your CV. So if you are looking for an interim role, perhaps look at your CV, look at where area gap areas and see if you can find something that can plug in that gap on an interim basis. When you are considering a move into the interim market, please do get in touch. I think the interim Mark has really picked up and it's been a very busy year for recruitment. Um, but as Namita says, it can be a really great way to diversify, to, to you know, to plug a gap, I guess, or a skills gap in, in your CV. Um, but even just to offer that flexibility and, and being able to take time off in between contracts. Well, Namita, thank you so much for your time. You've been really insightful. Um, you offer some really great advice to, to the market. So we really appreciate it. And thank you for being part of our Pathways to Success series. Thank you.